Good morning and welcome to Ansley United Church for this service the second Sunday in Epiphany. Due to the new COVID restrictions, our service is slightly pared down this morning. Unfortunately, we don't have our singers with us, but we do have music and we do have the hymns on screen for you to sing along with. We come together as the online community to be the church. May God be with us. And now, our prelude opens, played by David Fries. I invite us to worship. Gracious and all-loving God, you call us across deep waters and dark places. Yours is the light which guides us and the voice which we follow. We ask that you would reveal yourself to us as we worship you. May those without hope be encouraged, those who are sad, cheered, those who are seeking, find you, and may all things be in accordance to your will, in the name of your beloved Son. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for your compassion that meets us according to our need, for your gracious gift of faith that endures in times of trial and testing, for the urging of your spirit within that causes us to want to do good, and for the living presence of Christ, which sustains our hope and guides us to the truth of eternal life. We bless your name this day and pray that you will attend this time of worship. Accept all our praise, guide all our thoughts, answer all our prayer. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Our opening hymn is All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, Voices United, hymn 334.
Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside, and he sat down. And his disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. God blesses those who are poor and realizes who realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they shall be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of God is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all manner of evil things against you because you are my follower. Be happy about it. Be very glad. For a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted the same way. This is the word of the Lord. May God add blessing to our understanding. Amen. You know, when I preach on the Sermon on the Mount and those opening verses of chapter 5 in Matthew's Gospel, I can't help but smile. I'm recalling the humorous de depiction of their presentation in an off-the-wall film by the English comedy troupe Monty Python. In their film, they present Jesus on a hill preaching to a huge crowd. And as the camera pulls back, his voice fades with the distance. And some people are standing at the edge of the crowd, far away, and they're having trouble hearing. And they're straining to catch all his words. And one says to the other, what exactly did he say? I think, this person says, that it was blessed are the cheesemakers. What's so special about the cheesemaker, asks another. To which one responds, well, obviously, it's meant to be not meant to be taken literally. It refers to any manufacturer of dairy products. It's in good fun, and we can chuckle. But you know, I also found these lines interestingly pointed, as all of us today are quite a distance from the words of Jesus spoken over 2,000 years ago. We rely on others to transmit and to interpret what he said. And so naturally, we might wonder, are we getting it right? You might say, well, it is all straightforward. Well, perhaps so. But as I was looking for the version of scripture to share with you this morning, I came across in various Bibles the wording change. Some will say, blessed are those, or great blessings belong to those, or God blesses those who do and are such and such. And I believe it's the Good News Bible that reads, happy are the ones, happy are the ones. Well, each has a subtle nuance even though the majority comes to us as blessed are. But true to them all is that we have a blessing tagged to something that we might just not think or consider to be either a blessing, let alone something that we're happy to be given. Does one feel particularly blessed or happy when in mourning? Or when feeling rather meek and timid? humble, when persecuted 
for doing the right thing, or mocked, or have nasty, evil things said behind our back. Be happy, said Jesus, for they did the same to others before you. Remember the prophets of old. Well, no disrespect, Lord, but it's hard to get my mind around these things being blessings. Perhaps I misheard. Instead of blessings and happy, did you mean burdens? In transmitting the words of Jesus down the centuries, the church has provided them with a label. They're called the Beatitudes, and we're familiar with them as such. It comes from the Latin word beatitudo, which is translated as state of bliss, feeling of supreme happiness, joy. It's intentional to guide the faithful to understand that something supremely good and wonderful is at hand in these teachings, this message from Jesus, that might take us a little digging to reveal, perhaps, perhaps an act of letting go, an act of trust. It's worth the effort to put aside our fears and our distaste and let the Spirit infuse greater understanding of God's larger plan. In the Beatitudes, to be blessed means to be joyful. But it means much more than that. For it's not just a temporary euphoric rush. It's the enduring existential state of serenity that's found in harmony with the will of God. It's a tall order. So what does it take for these blessings to be appropriated with such enthusiasm? I think the first clue is that to be blessed in the way that Jesus meant it is not to depend on our own strength and abilities or even what's happening around us in our environment. Truly, most of us have little control of our surroundings and even what goes on inside, our emotions, our habits, our negative thoughts. It's not always what we want or we choose. And when it is recognized that we need help in our shortcomings, with our vulnerabilities, with our sense of helplessness and confusion, we are blessed because of the inner strength that we will be provided. And when you realize that you need the help, it will be given in abundant measure. So blessed are those who find themselves in difficult situations because they will reach out for the help that's given, a help that is poured out beyond measure. The Apostle Paul understood this well in his words to the church at Ephesus, his letter to the Ephesians, he wrote this. In the abundance of his glory, may he through his spirit enable you to grow in power with regard to your inner self so that Christ may live in your hearts through faith and then planted in love and built on love with all God's people, you will have the strength to grasp the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, so that knowing the love of Christ, which is beyond all knowledge, you may be filled with the utter fullness of God. And he concludes saying, Glory be to him whose power, working in us, can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Through the words of the apostle, I can see what the church meant in calling the opening verses of the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, the bliss and the happiness of Christ. Blessed are we when we understand that we, what we are and what we do is precisely what God would have us do and be. 
and will provide us with what we need for the task. And the assurance that no matter how we may feel or what little we may understand, we are part of a divine plan, a purpose wrought by God that we may be instruments of divine love and builders of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Our hymn is number 79 in Voices United, Arise, Your Light Has Come, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. May I share with you a prayer and blessing. A blessing for face masks. Blessed are those who give the gift of their time and their talent to create face masks for others, for their community, for strangers, for they shall help to save the, the lives of many people. Blessed are those who make face masks for others to wear so that together we may protect one another, especially the most vulnerable, who at another time had protected us when they worked as first responders, served in the military, or taught us the school lessons of our childhood, for they shall truly know the value of each human life. Blessed are those who work tirelessly to fill the bins in the market, or the clotheslines across the front door of the church with masks of all sizes and colors. For they shall know that this is grace, compassion, and love of neighbor. Blessed are the mask makers who send face masks to those who may be forgotten, the agencies that support the homeless, nursing home staff, and residents the mentally ill, the prisoners, the tenderest among us, for they shall have respected and remembered the least of these. Blessed are those who wear masks to show their care for others, who know that they can be passing on the virus that moves as stealth, infecting others days before their own symptoms emerge, for they shall be, for they shall, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the mask wearers, that they may see them as a sign of care and concern for others, that we may see your face beneath each one. Our closing hymn is number 642 in Voices United, Be Thou My Vision, verses 1, 2, and 5.
now we receive our commission and our benediction. Eternal God, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. Our service closes with a postlude. Thank you.